let's study quantum requirement and quantum yield now so quantum requirement okay quantum requirement is nothing but it is a number of photons light photons or light quanta required for the release of one molecule of oxygen is called as quantum requirement so number of light photons light photons or quanta or light quanta required for the release of one oxygen molecule required to release for the release of one oxygen molecule one oxygen molecule that is called quantum requirement now let's see what is uh, the number of photons or number of light quanta required for release of one oxygen molecule so here previously what we studied for the release for the splitting of one water due to splitting of one water molecule one nascent oxygen is released whereas oxygen one molecule of oxygen will be released due to splitting of how many water molecules two water molecules so when two water, water molecules undergo splitting how many protons four four electrons four protons and one oxygen molecule will be released okay so now these electron molecules are they enter into ps2 from ps2 they will be transported through electron transport system one by one so for the transfer of one electron for the transfer of one electron two photons are required let's see why two photons are required for the transfer of one electron through this through this electron transport system so these electrons are one electron is getting transported from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 so for this transfer what is required the activation of photosystem 2 is required and activation of photosystem 1 is also required for the activation of photosystem 2 one photon is consumed and for the activation of photosystem 1 also one light photon or light quanta is required so for the transfer of one electron two photons are required which are required for the activation of photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 so for the transfer of four electrons for the transport of four electrons how many photons are required now eight photons are required so when eight photons are absorbed by this absorbed by this ps2 two water molecules undergo splitting resulting in the formation of release of four electrons four protons and one oxygen molecule oxygen molecule is released into lumen protons are also left in lumen whereas electrons are transported through electron transport system one by one where each photo photosystem requires one photon for its activation during the transport of one electron and hence for one electron transport two photons are required required and for the transport of four electrons four eight photons are required so these eight photons are the photons that is quantum requirement for the release of required for the release of one molecule of oxygen so this is about quantum requirement now let's see quantum yield so what is quantum yield quantum yield is nothing but it is the amount of oxygen released amount of oxygen release per one quanta or per one light photon absorbed so amount of oxygen release amount of oxygen release per one quanta per one quanta or per one photon or per one photon absorbed that is called as quantum yield okay so per one oxygen how many photons are required eight photons are required so eight photons are absorbed for the release of one molecule of oxygen so how many photons are required how per one photon how many oxygen molecules will be released so one by eight one by eight it comes out to be 0.125 so 0.125 molecules of oxygen is released per one quanta of light or one photon of light absorbed that is called quantum yield now let's study the number of ATP formed and the number of NADPH formed due to splitting of two molecules of water.
Okay, right. So when two molecules of water undergo splitting, splitting, how many protons and electrons will be released? Four protons, four electrons, four electrons, and one oxygen molecule is released. Okay. So these four protons are left into lumen, whereas electrons are transported through electron transport system. Okay, so when four electrons are transported through electron transport system, how many protons are pumped into lumen from stroma? Four protons. For every electron transported through electron transport system, one proton is pumped. As four electrons are transported through electron transport system, four electrons are pumped into lumen from stroma. So, these four protons which are released directly from splitting of water and another four protons which are transported from pro, uh, stroma to lumen during electron transport through ETS becomes eight protons totally, eight protons. So, these eight protons results in the formation of how many ATPs? Four ATPs, four ATP because for the formation of one ATP how many protons are required? Two protons are required and hence eight protons result in the release, result in the formation of uh, four ATP. Whereas coming to NADH plus H plus. Okay, so when um when two electrons are picked up, when two electrons are picked up by NADP plus, what happens? One molecule of NADP plus plus H plus is formed. So when four protons are picked up by NADP plus. How many NADP plus molecules will pick up four electrons? Two molecules of NADP plus. So these two molecules of NADP plus consume four protons and reduced into two molecules of NADPH plus H plus. So how many molecules of NADPH plus H plus is formed? Two molecules. And how many molecules of ATP is formed? Four molecules of ATP is formed. So when two molecules of water undergo splitting, how many photons are required for its splitting? 8 photons are required for its splitting which results in the release of 4 protons, 4 electrons and 1 oxygen molecule. These 4 protons are, which are coming directly from the splitting of water are left into lumen and when 4 electrons are transported through electron transport system, protons are pumped into lumen. How many protons? 4 protons. So, totally 8 protons are accumulated inside the lumen which results in the formation of 4 ATP. And finally, these 4 electrons are picked up by 2 molecules of NADP plus and hence they reduce uh, and after picking these 4 electrons, they consume 4 protons from stroma and it is reduced into and they are reduced into 2 molecules of NADPH plus H plus. So, due to splitting of 2 water molecules, 4 ATP and 2 NADPH plus H plus is released. So, what can we say? When one water molecule undergoes splitting, it results in the formation of how many ATP? 2 ATP plus 2, 1 molecule of NADPH plus H plus. NADPH plus H plus. Okay. So, this is about the calculations of ATP, NADPH plus H plus protons, how many protons are released directly by the splitting of water and how many protons are pumped from stroma to lumen and uh, how many electrons are transported and uh, oxygen release and the number of photons required for uh, the release of one molecule of oxygen that is quantum requirement and we also studied about quantum yield. So this is all about light phase. In the next video, I will be starting with dark phase that is biosynthetic phase where this ATP and NADPH are utilized for the fixation of carbon dioxide into carbohydrate that is glucose which occurs inside the stroma.